The Lord definitely gave us music as a gift, didn't he? It's amazing how it connects. Thank you, ladies. What a beautiful gift. And man, Jesus certainly loves us a lot, huh? So four important words that just popped out at me as I was reading through this scripture over and over. The Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. Are these four words that you hear very often? No. But the Lord needs it. So what is this referring to? Well, as we read the gospel this morning, as we read about how Jesus sent a couple of his disciples and he said, go on ahead, there's going to be a, a colt and a donkey and, and I need that colt. You know, we're going to ride into Jerusalem and however he told them, right? And here, if they ask, just say, the Lord needs it. Just say that, right? So then what happens? Well, it plays out just as Jesus has said. Isn't that cool? I just think that Jesus is amazing. I mean, he is, right? He's, he's the Lord. He's God. He's human, and he knows what's going to happen. Like he actually said, this is going to happen, and they're going to ask this and say this, and ta-da! It's like magic, except for better and good and holy and right. The Lord needs it. So, so here they go. They go, and they need this cold, and they say, the Lord needs it. And what happens? Here you go. Have a cold. There are no questions. There are no wonderings. There are no... Um, well, what about, or who are you talking about, the Lord? Because it could have been like the Lord, the people that owned the property, the Lord of the, the place. But we're talking about Jesus. Jesus needs it. And they just said, okay. Have you ever considered that the Lord might need something from you? Have you ever considered that the Lord might need something? Because he's God, right? He's He doesn't need anything from us because he's got it all figured out. But he has done beautiful things um, and prepared ways to invite us to be part of his kingdom work. We just completed a sermon series on the Lord's Prayer where we talked about, you know, the Lord's Prayer. May heaven and earth, right, uh, reveal his kingdom. His kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Maybe the Lord needs us to participate. Isn't it cool that we get to do that? I love being a part, being able to serve a church that participation is just, it's like etched into the genes of this place. Like, we get it, right? Participation is what makes this thing run. It makes Jesus' name known. It brings hope and life. The Lord needs us. He set up this world in a way that he wants us to be part of it. So here he is. This is triumphal entry, right? They're praising God. They see that he's coming through, and so they throw cloaks. Well, first, they throw cloaks on this colt of a donkey that's never been ridden. Um, I don't know if you all know much about horses or donkeys, but riding a colt that's never been ridden, isn't something that you just like jump on a trail ride in Colorado and follow the the colt in front of you, right? Like, I don't know how this worked because I would expect there'd be some bucking and some rearing and some stopping, like, but Jesus is Lord. There's no conversation about that in the scripture. That's not necessary because the Lord needs it. The colt's ready. Here he goes, jumps on it. Beautiful, beautiful gift. So they throw their coats on it, they, like a saddle, Jesus jumps on, and all of a sudden they, they go into Jerusalem, and the people joyfully praise God in loud voices, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. In some, um, in, in the other gospels, it talks, it's Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, save us, is what Hosanna means, save us, Lord. Save us. The Lord, the Savior, we need him. Oh, we need him desperately. Desperately. Because he is our Savior. Just as Robin talked about, just as was spoken about in the song, we need Jesus to come and rescue us. And praise be to God that he did. 
Praise be to God that we are in the future and get to look back and go, wow, look what Jesus did. So here he's entering. Now, usually donkey colts were used for civil processions. They weren't for kingship. They weren't for royalty. They were for civil processions, people, everyday people. So here Jesus comes not with all the trumpets blasting and all the horns and all the greatest glory, but instead meekly and humbly, because that's who our Lord is. So he rides on the colt of a donkey, again blows my mind, and enters the place, enters Jerusalem. Glory to God in the highest. So this is all... Um, this is all the fulfillment of prophecy. If you go back to Zechariah 9, 9, the scripture says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. Just as is prophesied, Jesus fulfills. The Lord enters, riding on the colt of a donkey, the Savior, the King. Jesus is the King of all kings. He is perfect royalty, but humble in all of his ways. And he is good. And so here we are, praising God, just days, just days before he walks, um, carrying the cross days before he's betrayed, days before he's crucified, and takes all of our sin, all of our shame, all of our pain, all of our gunk, our yuck, just days before that. And we're just praising. People know who Jesus is. They've seen about him. They've heard about him. They come out, praise be to God. And this this praise that they're singing, this, this blessed be, all comes from Psalm 118. It's right out of there, except for the word king isn't used in Psalm 118, but it is in Zechariah. I love how scripture just comes together, Old Testament, Psalm, into the Gospels, and it all completes one big story. And we get to be a part of that story. We aren't written here but we are a part of his story. When you think about your life story, your life journey, you're a part. As you celebrate Jesus' kingship, as you praise him, as you share your love that comes from God through you to the world around, you are written in his story. Isn't that cool? So cool. Praise be to God. This Palm Sunday is just a recognition, a, a, a confirmation that Jesus is indeed fact, the Lord. The Lord needs it. He is the Lord. He is the Savior. And he needs you and me, because that's how he set up the world, that we would all participate in his good kingdom work. But God is so cool and that he won't ask us to do anything that he isn't willing to do first, right? Off, he's just paving the way, loving the people, being humble and adored. So as we worship him today, as you go about your week, I invite you to remember that there is a Lord that has promised to never leave you or forsake you. There's a Christ, the King, a Savior in the world who has taken the cross for your life so that he could be with you forever. And he is the Lord. And remember that as he goes forward, as he carries you in whatever struggle, whatever pain, whatever anguish you're dealing with, whatever joy you're celebrating, because he's walking in that too and celebrating along with you, he's got you. He's present with you, carrying you every step of the way. And he's inviting you to participate in his work. Will you respond? Will you respond quickly? Will you respond um, without a gazillion questions? Because that's hard sometimes. 
The Lord needs it. We get to celebrate his mighty and powerful name. So let's keep praising it, shall we? Let's keep praising Jesus. Would you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, you are good, you are holy, you are righteous, and you are true. And we celebrate and praise your holy name. We trust in you to carry us along this road. We know that you are good and have gone before us, and we know that you carry us along the way. Sometimes you give us jobs. Sometimes you give us tasks to participate in your work so that we can see your glory all the more fully, so we can hear the stories of people that connect with you. Come, Lord Jesus. Be our daily bread. We trust in you. Amen.